Boy, you might have been camping and you might have been cooking, but you ain't never been camp cooking. What's happening at Sir William? And today we're fixing to go on to some trails at URE. I believe that's how you say it. I want to say it's pronounced U-R-E, but it's got a W, it's got an H. Yeah, anyway, off-road trails, URE, supposed to be fun, stay tuned. This is Joe's Xterra, 2014. We got Lil Joe, Big Joe, and we're riding up. This is Rocky Mount uh, Trail, and we're gonna connect to the other trails. And I think that we're gonna end up going down Nikki Bell. Well, up. If you're feeling real adventurous, you can try some of these out. Might make these trails a little bit more fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
What'd you find on the trail? This. What kind of part is that? To a jeep. <laughs> Make it up there in two in, in two foot drive. Yeah. My clearance wasn't even an issue. Yeah, so the KDSS is what it is is it's a sway bar. Like it's like a, a disconnect allows it to be fully disconnected. What this does is utilizes some kind of air pressure with hydraulics to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And once it figures out that it needs to level up, um, then it you know it shoots the sway to, a sway bar way down. But it's only on one side. So does it make a big difference? I I've never been crawling without KDSS. Um, I will tell you on the mountains though. Whenever you're driving through the mountains, you can do 90 in this thing. And it, yeah, and it's sweet. No, 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 you wouldn't do that now. Right, so that being said, you know, so that's what the KDSS is for. Is on road, it's supposed to tighten everything up, and then when it's off road, it's supposed to loosen it up. Bad thing is, is it's a $1,200 option, $2,400 fix. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's how it goes, so, yeah. <laughs> sweet SR5. Yeah. I told this guy he needs to get off these trails because he doesn't have a Jeep. He's probably not going to make it. Come on up. All right, now passenger. There you go. Not bad. Best sighting of a Land Rover LR3 still in running order. Making its way through the trail. So for the most part, the trails through URE are pretty cool. Not too extreme. I mean, you know, easy enough to do for the most part. Um, put it in four wheel drive and take your time. And I'd say you could do this with relatively stock vehicle. So I didn't get a chance to do the the D's, I guess, Dickie Bell and Daniel. And the reason is is because it's just gonna take too long. Uh, those are long trails. And one, I'm still unsure um, how uh, Daniel or Dickie Bell looks. And um, I wanna, you know, do those in the stock forerunner, but depending on who you talk to, depending on whether or not they'll tell you if you can or can't. Um, I could go with these guys and we'd be all good, but we don't have time. I've run into a time issue. So that being said, I can't go. I'll show y'all this pretty truck now, but the man just told me it's basically a Rubicon truck. Now I want you to look at the size of this damn thing. A Rubicon. <laughs> <laughs> just, you can fit a Rubicon in this thing. I was just saying, who knows? <laughs> Rear locker, front locker, sway bar, disconnect. 
I mean, when you don't when you don't need a diesel, this is the one to get for sure. Yes. Budget, man. I knew exactly where that came from. Joe ran up to the local daycare, robbed them of their table. <laughs> Budget, man. Camping at Uari. Great. There's fantastic amount of spots to go camping at Uari. Uh, there's campgrounds, and the campgrounds are specifically nice. That one in particular, Baden Lake. Um, we stayed at Baden Lake, my mom and I. It was the first time she had ever been camping. Her request was it had to have a toilet. So we found one with a toilet. Not only did it have a toilet, it had a nice toilet. Flush toilets, not a vault toilet. Had a really good campground. Uh, you know, it wasn't on the lake itself, but we could see the lake. There are lake access uh, campgrounds, but I think you're going to have to deal with those most of the time being reserved or taken. <laughs> there uh, is a fee to, par or to camp at that campground, and I want to say mom told me it was 12 bucks. She got there before me and picked out the camp site, so I think it was 12 bucks uh, per day to camp there. We did go explore Arrowhead Campground. Arrowhead Campground is uh, about the same, except for it's paved, uh, and they did have bathrooms as well. Both campsites had showers, which was really cool. I was able to take a shower, and it was a warm shower, which beats the last shower that I took at a campground, which was on Outer Banks, and it was cold. So that was pretty cool. The only thing I didn't like about them was the fact that uh, it was the shower was some kind of like push button type deal. Uh, I guess so you can't just leave the faucet on. So that's kind of a kind of a pain. But other than that, everything was good. Uh, Arrowhead though is it costs more. So you know whichever one you want to do. But yeah, campgrounds all over the place now. Had I not been with mom, there are uh, a few other campgrounds that I found, or a few other campsites rather, that I found that I would stay at. And one of which is a beautiful on the lake camp uh, site. And I'll actually share that site on the Facebook group USA on Dirt. Uh, hidden trails and gems across America. So if you're not already a member of that group, go on to that group. The idea behind that group is to uh, share really cool campsites that I find and that you find and that other people find, just a big community. And then also, uh, just like any other community of like-minded people, uh, share thoughts, ideas, and trails and different things like that. So if you're not already a member of that group, check it out. It's facebook.com slash USA on Dirt, I believe is how you get to it um, or that's how you get to my page and then from there you can find it so check out both my page and that group uh, and you'll see the campsite that I'm telling you but anyway that would have been the most ideal spot I would come back and definitely camp there or you could find some spots that look like you could camp along some of the OHV trails you do have to have an OHV pass which is only five dollars so that's a plus I've been to some places like Outer Banks in particular that's the $50 ORV pass. Flip side of that, the ORV pass in Outer Banks is good for seven days. The $5 pass here is only good for uh, one day. However, for $30, you can get an annual pass. Next year, I'm probably going to get an annual pass. So, or the next time that I come, I'm probably going to get an annual pass. So outside of URE, uh, on the main highway, which is Highway 109, uh, you will come across the El Dorado Outpost. Yeah, make sure you stop at the El Dorado Outpost. Huh? That's not it. It'd be pretty cool if it was, though, huh? The cool thing about the El Dorado Outpost, too, is the fact that they got free air. So rock on. I didn't have to sit there and wait on the uh, little air compressor I have, so that's a good deal. The El Dorado Outpost has got all kinds of stuff, anything that you can imagine. They have a fantastic uh, selection of breakfast sandwiches and stuff that you can get made. I highly recommend the Chuck Wagon Sandwich because uh, it's amazing. I had it with lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, and added an egg. It was great. Check out that old K5. Nice. So I highly recommend the Chuck Wagon at the El Dorado Outpost. Uh, really cool little spot. You can get everything that you need. If those last minute items that you may not have uh, remembered to grab, you can grab them right here. So that's always a plus. 
Now, as far as cell phone signal, cell phone signal for me, which is uh, AT&T, the cell phone signal here is kind of shoddy. Um, it's hit or miss. So if there's a way that you can uh, download uh, maps of the area, some kind of way offline, I recommend using Backcountry Navigator, which is what I have. A lot of people have Gaia Maps and really like it. Either one, just as long as you have some kind of way to download maps, I highly recommend it. Do you need four wheel drive to uh, come to URE? No, you don't necessarily have to have four wheel drive. Uh, to come visit URE and camp around the forest uh, roads that they have are pretty well maintained and you can get uh, to and from anywhere you need to for the most part without four-wheel drive. I would recommend having some sort of a higher clearance vehicle uh, crossover like a RAV4 or uh, something of that nature uh, would be fine uh, but I, I wouldn't take a car uh, per se. Not saying that you can't take a car, just saying I wouldn't. Pretty stoked about the uh, new sleeping setup, kitchen setup, and the reason is is because you can hear it back there as I'm going down these trails. Really, really not noisy. That was my number one fear of making this kitchen setup was the fact that I can't deal with noises. They will drive me insane. So I'm pretty stoked at the fact that this doesn't make a lot of noise. Yeah, hardly hear it down these bumpy roads. So pretty cool with that. And it's worked out great. The oil that I used to seal it though still hasn't dried. So anytime you touch it, you get oily. Yeah. What can you do? So as far as the trails out here at URE, they're pretty nice. Um, you know, degree of difficulty, not really. Kind of technical. Uh, you're going to get some pinstriping on your truck if you bring it out here. Uh, that's kind of to be expected though. But for the most part, yeah, they're good. I like them. I had no problems with them. I didn't get a chance to go up Dickey Bell or Daniel, and the reason is it's because of time constraints. I have to get out of here. It's already 3 o'clock. Uh, we stopped. We had some lunch, and it's a three-hour drive for me to get back to Columbia. So I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully soon I'll be able to get some video of me going um, on Dickey, or, uh, Dickey Bell or Daniel Trails in the stock 4Runner. I think that that would be pretty cool. Uh, you know, when you ask people to do it, you're always going to have a group of people that tell you no. You're always going to have a group of people that tell you yes. The only way that I'm really going to be able to find out is if I just take the forerunner up there to do it. Unfortunately, I just didn't have enough time to do it today. So definitely going to be back, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the next uh, trip that I have planned, I'm actually going to Kentucky uh, to be at uh, the Land Between the Lakes. So pretty excited. Uh, stay tuned for a video on that. I've got another uh, short kayaking video that I made. Uh, so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah, please like share comment do all that good stuff and make sure that you subscribe to see the latest videos till next time. Peace Thanks for watching us playing